Hey guys, Marmalade here. Thank you so much for checking in. Uh, I've been asked uh, multiple times since I got back from the long trail uh, to do a video on uh, some of the things that uh, worked well for me, didn't work well, and if it didn't work well, uh, was it failure or what am I replacing it with? So I thought I'd go over some of the things that I experienced. You know, and it's kind of weird to even be in my old park again. Uh, it's been uh, about six weeks since I did a video here. And uh, it's actually quite busy, so I may have to stop a few times. Uh, it's Wednesday, July 1st, 2020. And there's a lot of people out. So um, let's just get started. I want to go over, so we'll start with, uh, not to be negative, but we'll start with uh, what either didn't work well for me or some things that failed and what I may or may not be switching out uh, for those things. Okay, so my first item is the, my Be Free water filter. And uh, I made a semi uh, rookie mistake. It wasn't really a rookie mistake, but uh, I went to this on my through eye attempt last year, the PCT. And uh, the flow rate, uh, the ease of it, the easy ease to back flush it with the bag and that kind of thing. It was just easy for me. Much better flow rate than the Sawyer. I've been a Sawyer guy until this. And uh, so what happened was I got off trail last year. Uh, I stopped using, uh, I stopped hiking. I had to heal from a broken ankle, that kind of stuff. And then this spring I started hiking again and I started using my old uh, Be Free filter. So what happens with these, if you don't know, whether it's this one or Sawyer or most of these kind of filters like this, if you don't continually use them, and, and uh, like at home, even when you're not hiking, maybe every few weeks, uh, use it and filter some water through this and keep using it, they end up drying up and, and the flow rate goes horribly wrong and almost to where it, you can't get water through it. So I had uh, been training and doing some hikes and trying to test out my new tent, things like that, and I've been filtering some water. A lot of times I just carried the water I needed out and back to the car, so I didn't really use the filter much, but the flow rate, flow rate was kind of low, but once I got on the long trail, uh, you can ask PT, I could hardly get, I was forcing the water through this, you know, I put the dirty water in this bag, put the filter on there, and uh, I would squeeze and squeeze and squeeze, and I could barely get any water through there. So, um, so I told you that I'll, I'll kind of go over things that either failed or I had problems with, and uh, what I ended up doing was our first, uh, I think our first trail tra town in Manchester, Resupply, happened to have the, um, Mountain Goat uh, like gear store and they happen to have one of these on the wall. So I ended up buying this one and it solved my problem. I actually had one at home ready to go for when I get back on the PCT, but it didn't help me out on the trail. So anyway, um, I was able to get another one and it's, it, uh, it solved the problem. And even PT was a little jealous of the flow rate compared to a Sawyer. But uh, it eventually, as, it, as it's used more and more, it'll slow down a little bit, but still the flow rate's very good on this. You can, you can filter water very fast with the Be Free. All right, my next uh, kind of failure was uh, my trusty uh, Soto Windmaster stove. It has a uh, igniter switch, and that igniter switch failed on the first day. I've had this for a while, and it just decided to stop working. So it's not the end of the world, though, because when I turn the gas on and the fuel on, I could just use my lighter and I light it. But I like the convenience of having this, especially if my lighter went out. But uh, I'm not sure why it went out, but the stove still works. So right now, I'm going to keep it. It fits in my uh, pot well. That was kind of a small but not super important failure, but it did fail. So my next failure is not a super huge important one, but uh, my uh, gaiters I wore around my ankles to keep the rocks and sticks out of my shoes. Uh, they didn't fail, but uh, I, I they ended up getting stabbed and torn by the, the rough trail and all the sticks and roots and rocks and stuff. And they were an older pair I had. They were like original ones, not even the ones I eventually got for the PCT. So I wore my older ones on purpose and they tore. I didn't even bother sewing them up. So when we got done with the trail, I just chucked them in the garbage, but I'll let you know. I ordered, while I was on trail, ordered some new ones for the PCT and check them out. Uh, you got to represent, I got uh, marmalade orange in there, there's some yellow and purple, so I love the color. So these are my new gaiters, I haven't even worn them yet, but um, lots of orange in there for, got to represent the marmalade, right? So yeah, that's going to be uh, fun to wear. Uh, next were my, uh, they didn't really fail, but I had purchased, I've been wanting some very thin, lightweight sandals for, from the brand Zero, X-E-R-O. I bought their... Um, lightest thinnest most ultralight pair of sandals i wore them in the airport i wore them in uh, camp uh in towns things like that uh, i live in flip-flops i mean i'm in san diego so we live in them but uh, i went light and thin and i really paid for it uh there was nothing wrong with them they didn't break but uh a i couldn't keep they go um, a strap between your toes and there's a thing around your heel and i could not keep my sandals on the heel straps no matter how much i adjusted always fell off or if i cranked them too tight they were super uncomfortable and they were super, super thin. So even in camp, if I stepped on one small pebble, it killed my feet. So walking around camp and town, things like that, just hurt my feet. So they were um, not very manageable. So I actually um, wrote them 
and returned them and I'm in the process of getting a credit. I'm gonna get uh, probably the next step up a little bit thicker. They're a little bit heavier, but not much, still light. But um, I feel like I picked the, I chose the wrong uh, pair for what I wanted. Um, so I'm gonna get a little bit uh, thicker, more comfortable, like I said. So that's, that's uh, I'm in the process of doing that right now. All right, next was a really big fail. And you guys, if you watched my through hike, uh, saw this, I've since washed them so they don't stink and they're not covered in mud. But as you guys know, um, I'd done some miles on these before I started the hike, but I was only 80 to 100 miles in. I started, they started tearing. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's my finger right there. But yeah, uh, they started tearing and they're, they're bad off now, but they started tearing early. We walked through a lot of water and mud and uh, they're both the same exact way. They're torn the same on both sides, like this. So when I got back, I washed them. Uh, I contacted, I called, talked to some really great people at Ultra. Told them that, you know, now they're got their wear in them. They've got over 300 miles on them, but I said they started tearing just 100 miles into my hike. And so I said, you know, if you can oversee how they look now, um, they were they were failing right off the bat. And I said, you know, I used to use the Lone Peak at 3.5, never had, a, the toes would peel sometimes, but never had them tear. But these temps, I love, they're super comfortable, but they started tearing right away. So they asked me to fill out a returns thing and send some pictures of this, which I did. And I just heard back and uh, they're sending me a replacement pair. I don't know if it's gonna be, these are the older model, the 1.5s. Uh, before I started my long trail hike, I actually ordered a new pair of temps because I knew that I didn't know they were gonna tear, but I knew that uh, by the time I got done with the long trail, I'd need a new pair, a fresh pair for on the PCT. So actually, while I was gone, the new pair came in. This is, uh, so if you can see the difference, this is the 1.5s, this is the, um, and I actually haven't even been able to study them enough to know the difference yet. Uh, you see the, the tread's different, a lot more nubs and, and traction on this. Um, I'm hoping the forefoot's just as wide, but I'm gonna uh, do some day hikes on this before I get on the PCT. But anyway, so this is the, so these are the 1.5s and these are the 2.0s. So I don't know if they're sending me an old pair of those or one of these, I'm hoping these, so I have two pair. Um, so anyway, uh, I haven't even got to try them yet, but I wanna show you that was my solution um, because they're not really making those anymore, I loved them. But uh, at least they honored their shoes and they're sending me a new pair, so that's great. Because they do cost about, I think at REI, they're about 140 bucks, so it is substantial. So that's the new pair. All right, so my next one is very interesting. I don't know if you guys know, but I, I carry one or two, on the PCT I carry two, but I have one really big Anchor uh, 26,800 milliamp uh, backup battery. That's what we recharge our phones with, so we can use gut hooks, and I vlog, I'm a vlogger, so not only am I using a lot of my battery to vlog all day, but then I'm editing at night in the tent, so I use a lot of it. So I had a big one that I had, I've had for quite a while. I carried it on the PCT and it's, it's so big. It, uh, I think it charges the phone six, seven, eight times, something like that, but it weighs a pound. So that's, that's a big percentage of my base weight, but I've had it for a very long time. So an interesting story. Um, I want to say three or four days in, we went to that, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the name of the mountain now. I think it's Stratton, but I apologize. I'll put it down here if I'm wrong. But uh, remember we were going to maybe uh, sleep in the tower. And so we sat around all day because there's people day hiking there and they wanted to go up to the tower. So uh, we waited at the end of the day and, as, and we were climbing up and had all our gear and I just casually threw my battery in my jacket pocket because I, I didn't have enough hands. I'm climbing up the super steep stairs to get up to the top of the tower, the fire tower. And I got near the top and of all things, the battery fell out of my pocket, hit a bunch of the stairs on the way down and then shattered on the rocks that the uh, tower is, is screwed into and attached to. And I was just like, you gotta be kidding me because it's the only battery I had and um, you know, like four days in and, and I'm thinking, man, if, I, if this is ruined, I can't, I'll run out and I, you know, I won't have, be able to vlog anymore. So I went down there and surprisingly it was kind of semi put together still. It was shattered in the case over the batteries. So I took, uh, I always carry some black duct tape on my um, hiking pole. So I, I taped it all up and actually it still worked, uh, but I couldn't charge it more than 50%. There's four lights, each one represents a quarter of the battery and uh, I couldn't get it to uh, fill up. So basically, you know, between my battery and borrowing a little bit of uh, PTs, we got to the next town and uh, they happened, I forget the town, I apologize, I don't know if it's Rutland, but anyway, we went to one, they had a Walmart and they had a 20,000 milliamp. So I bought a new one and I thought I had it with me, but I don't, but um, you know, they're just a brick. And so uh, it's not quite as big as the one I had, but it, it's a new battery. So it really, I uh, used it the rest of the trip and it really retained a lot of charges for me. So. That was something that failed, but it wasn't because it failed, it was because I was an idiot. So yeah, that was interesting. Okay, my next one is my chest water bottle holder. 
and I've had this for quite a while and I'm gonna give a plug to the person who makes this because he's an amazing guy and I support local small businesses and um, but I've had this forever I did you know uh, the 900 something miles uh, of the PCT last year I had this for half a year a year before that so I think I've figured out I've done over 1500 miles with this thing and um, it ended up tearing and, and really this thing is really really well made I think I snagged it on something so I did sew it up so that it would make it through the long trail but um, when I was in one of the towns on a long trail, I just ordered another one. I'm going to give him a plug. Um, if you go to Etsy, E-T-S-Y, it's where he sells his stuff. He makes amazing stuff. He's a local in Southern California. He's a family man and a backpacker. Makes really good, high-quality stuff, and he knows like what backpackers need. But he has a, um, a page on there called Justin's UL. So J-U-S-T-I-N-S-U-L for ultralight. And you go on there and... Um, if it's not showing, it's because he's currently sold out because he sells that so fast that you know he has to wait till his inventory. But you, I suggest you order this stuff. It's it's well made. So I ordered another one on trail because I knew that basically this was done once I got off the long trail. And I ordered another one, and I actually sent me. It's a newer version. It looks the same, and it's right here. I don't know if you can see this guy's very well, but it's a new version that's a little bit tougher material. It only weighs like one gram more. The mesh is a little tougher, and the whole overall. Uh, material is much sturdier so this is going to go on my pack but i just want to show you that and give him a plug he's a great guy um and a lot of backpackers use this stuff this holds the uh, not the i mean you can put a one liter bottle i get the one that's like i don't know if i apologize if it's 750 milliliters but it's just a fraction a little smaller than the one liter and i feel that it fits in here better and handles the weight better instead of having a giant bottle in there but uh yeah i'm looking forward to putting this on there and using it all right so another thing that failed yes there's more failures believe it or not um I've had a um, Trekology air pillow for a long time and uh, I've used it and used it for quite a bit of trips and I used it on the PCT for like the second half of my hike and all my like overnighters and stuff when I was training and uh, I get on trail and first night it's leaking so it's one of those things where I had to fill it up probably I don't like my pillow fully blast full and I don't want it low it's kind of in the middle where I like it but um, I had to fill it up literally six to 10 times a night. So every time I flip over, I have to blow up the pillow. It's like a whole process and you know, it ruins your uh, deep sleep. So I was online, I ordered another one and you know, uh, there's no plug, I bought it. It's called Trekology. I don't know if you can see that, Trekology. Um, but yeah, this is like 15 bucks or something on Amazon. So I have a new one. I got black because it just hides the dirt a little better. Uh, anyway, so that's gonna be my new pillow. But yeah, it was a little pain to just have it keep uh, letting out air. So. That was another failure. All right, so this is not a failure, but just things happen on the trail. And uh, early on, we couldn't make a fire at some of the campgrounds because everything was too wet. We got rain at night and things like that. So we couldn't make a fire, but we had one fire and I showed it in a video. I'll see if I have it here. But uh, two young kids that were uh, flying by us made a fire for us. And so it was great. Well, we're sitting and eating dinner, eating dinner and I wasn't really paying attention. I'm sitting near the fire and I felt something hot on my lap. Turned out an amber flew out, burned a giant hole in kind of the front of my shorts. So my black hiking shorts that I've had for a long time were ruined. So I hiked the rest of the trail with them and I chucked those along with my gaiters and a few other things. So yeah, that was kind of interesting. So another gear failure, which really wasn't a gear failure, it was a human failure, which was, if you remember, I was going um, up the big day up um, Mount Mansfield and uh, had to take some bad weather. It started to snow on us and rain. It was I got kind of sketched out. I thought it was dangerous for me, so I took the storm uh, bad weather trails around, which were just as hard and just not quite as dangerous, but just super sketchy and super slick. And I was falling, but that's where I snapped the pole. So that wasn't the pole's fault. I've never broken a pole like that in three or four years using them. So um, I ended up having in Stowe, Vermont, buy a new pair that were actually kind of expensive, which I've since given to my son. But as I said in my videos, I have, always have a backup pair because I like these. Um, they're $30, $29.99 at Costco. Uh, they're cork, which I like, prefer. Uh, hey, they even have the orange logo this year. So every year they change the color of the logo. But yeah, so this is my backup pair. And I've since gone to Costco and bought now a backup pair for these. So I really like them. Um, I just found, you know, I had a long time ago, I bought like a $190 pair of black diamonds. and. I didn't feel they were any better than a $30 pair and especially if you snap them like that I mean you'd be glad that you spent 30 bucks and not like I said almost $200 so yeah so I got the new pair and I'm ready to rock them so that's great and as I'm listing all these things it seems like everything I had failed but it really didn't but just you know when you do a 273 mile month long trip things uh, happen so uh, the last thing and this isn't a failure um, 
I will make a video on this probably separately if things work out the way I want, but um, my main thing was my Altiplex 10. And this is no negativity on the tent. It worked, it, the tent itself worked well. I was having problems with my line locks not keeping my tent firm. So uh, when I would set up my tent and pitch it, have a proper pitch, I'd wake up in the middle of the night or in the morning and, and my tent was sagging on me. It was a very small ultralight tent. I purposely went for smaller, lighter, and more compact. The problem I've had with tents ever since I started backpacking is I'm six foot three and like 230, 240, and um, <laughs> I just can't find a tent that's that's light and is functional and is waterproof. I had the Tiger Wall UL2 uh, from Big Agnes last year and it worked great in the desert because it only rained like twice on me. And I got into Washington and it poured and it poured and it poured and my tent was still nylon, just soaked through every direction. And I was, my just was soaked all the time. So I, I purposely gone to the Cuban fiber or now called Dyneema material and z -Packs makes an amazing tent. But I found that from this, uh, using it, all I did on the long trail, that it's too small for me. The way I described it to PT was that I felt like I was in a coffin. So um, I had to be centered perfectly for my feet and my toes, you know, and my head not to touch, which is okay. But I had to sleep near the door because that's where the highest pitch is. If you get too far to the, there's only one door on the tent. So when you get to the backside, it slopes down. So you'd be basically touching the material. So I had to sleep in one spot all the time. The only way I could move was just to roll over one side or the other. Um, I could fit some of my gear in there, but I, I felt everything was smashed around me and it actually affected the bathtub part of the, the tent and the way it was properly uh, structured to not let rain in it and condensation. So um, I just felt, um, and I know some it's made for tall people and some people are using it, but I, I think I went too small and too ultra light. So the one issue I have with the tents is, what was great is uh, PT has a duplex. So I, it's a two man tent they have, if you don't know. Uh, but when I, I laid it into size me, when you get when you get on an air mattress and you lift you up, my feet and head are close to the walls again. So my issue was, how do I get a light tent that gives me uh, room to move? I want to be able to put my gear in there. I want to be able to move around, and yet not too heavy, not too big. So what I figured out mathematically was I'm probably going to the triplex. So what I have done is um, I was uh, emailing and conversing with uh, Joe Valesco, the owner of Z Packs. Uh, before my hike with the problems with it sagging on me and just the more I use it the more it was not the right tent for me So, you know, he told me that you know use it on the long trail and if it if you're not happy with it send it back So um, today is July 1st um, like Four or five days ago. I mailed I got the return authorization from uh, Z-Packs Which is a frustrating process in itself because they don't have phone numbers only email and so I sent that back uh, Friday it should have got there yesterday I'm trying to, the problem I'm having now is that um, I'll be doing a separate video on this, but uh, I plan on getting on, on the PCT and doing significant miles this year, and I need a tent. So uh, they're gonna give me a credit for my old tent. I'm gonna pay extra for the triplex. It's a three, it's technically, they call it a three-man tent. It's really like a large two-man tent, but I'll have plenty of room in that, but I have more leg room, especially if I lay diagonally, so I'll have more room. So that's what I'm going with, but I need to get the credit so I can put it towards the new tent and pay the difference and I have to get it to myself before I get on trail again. And the problem is is that I may be going on trail in like three weeks and their ship time is two to three weeks. So I'm trying to work with them but I seem to get almost no response back from them. Uh, I've sent two emails in five days and never heard back. So it's getting really frustrating. So um, yeah, and it, I guess I don't know why they don't have phone numbers but it's frustrating. I, we could just solve it all in, in a two minute phone conversation but it's not how it works with them. So I really, really like their products and think it's the right tent for me and the right material, but I'm trying to be patient yet, try to get this tent. So I'll let you know and maybe even do a review if I have time, uh, if I get it in time to get on trail. So if I don't, I may have to ship it to myself from z -Packs ahead of, of myself on trail. So anyway, uh, that's what's going on with that tent. So um, Altiplex is gonna be out and then hopefully the Triplex will be my next tent that will hopefully work and I'll be happy. And I'll be gaining about six to eight ounces, so a little more weight, but I've just realized that the tents, I've just had so much problem with tents, I can't get a tent that, that's right in every way. So this hopefully is the right match for me. All right, enough with the negativity and things that did or didn't work, things like that. Just go with what did work and what I was happy with and um, that, that went as planned. Again, I gotta go with my Be Free water filter and my three liter Hydro Pack bag. This thing's great, uh, it's very light. It doesn't look like it, but it's very light. Uh, it collapses small. Uh, once I got the filter, a new one that wasn't uh, dried out and not working right, it worked great. The flow rate, uh, even PT was a little jealous of me. 
But uh, this thing worked way, really well and I was very happy with it. Um, you know, I carry plastic smart water bottles in my pack, but this gives me an extra three liters of possible uh, water I can carry if it's a long stretch without water. So it gives me that ability when I need to. And I like that small. Uh, how you back flush this is basically, well, after you filter some water, you can leave some water in here and you actually just go like this and you shake it really hard and it back flushes the inside part of this filter and then you can just pour it out. So that's, it's very easy. I think it's simple to do, even simpler than the Sawyer. All right, my next one is my Thermarest Neo Air X-Lite uh, air mattress pad. Now I had problems with this because I bought uh, their standard length it was 72 inches long and I'm 6'3", I'm, I'm 75 inches, so three inches longer, which I don't mind if my toes hang off, it doesn't bother me. But I had the narrow one, the 20 inch wide one, and I was constantly, I'm a, I'm a size sleeper and I roll over and each time I want to get on the other side. And I kept falling out off of it or it would shoot out from underneath me. So um, I returned that and I purchased from REI, the, also 72 inches long, but I went from uh, 20 inches to 25 inches wide and I was super happy with this. So been really happy. I fold mine up. I don't use the bag or anything. I save weight. This was flat. I actually put it in my pack along my back. So it helps um, a little more padding in my back. And also if there's anything pokey or bumpy in my pack, this kind of uh, defers it a little bit. So really happy with this. All right, next is my Enlightened Equipment Toward Apex Synthetic Jacket. It replaced my uh, down jacket from my PCT through hike attempt. Uh, yeah, custom ordered it with the colors. Um, this thing not only it weighs half of what my down jacket weighs. It takes up a lot less space. What I do is as I put in my quilt and my sleeping clothes in the bottom, and I put uh, like some town clothes and my rain clothes and some things I don't need towards the bottom of the pack, I just take this and I stuff it in and I just fill all the crevices and it takes up almost no space in my pack. So I just fill in all the fillers where there's holes and air pockets. So um, things have been great, super warm. You know, one of the benefits with synthetic is, you know, with down, if it gets wet, you lose the warm warming properties. With this, within reason, it can get wet or damp and still keep you warm. So it would help if you ever were in a kind of a um, hypothermia kind of situation. So I was really, really happy with this. Uh, I wore it sometimes at night early on. We, we had, it was the weirdest weather. We had everything from 90 plus and 100% humidity to snow and rain and everything in between. So some nights I had to sleep with this, even with my hood on my head to keep warm and my beanie and then some nights I couldn't get cool enough I was I didn't even sleep under my quilt so this this really was great and worked well all right next up is my outdoor research echo hoodie I really love these you guys have to check them out um, they're amazing and they they I think they look heavier than they really are they have a hood uh, it weighs nothing you can almost see through it um, it has SPF quality for sun. A lot of people just hike in the day in the sun with this to keep you from getting burned. I'm naturally kind of all skin, so I don't worry about it as much. I love this for um, in camp in the evenings. In the mornings, I like this if it's chilly in the mornings. Uh, I had a gray one I did the PCT through hiking with, um, but not an Echo hoodie, but a different brand. But this is synthetic, super light, uh, but it takes the edge off in the morning if it's cold. I like to, to, if it's really cold in the morning, just put this on, start hiking, and once I warm up, take it off but it's great in camp in the evenings, things like that, uh, in town. So this is the Outdoor Research Echo Hoodie. Love it, and of course it's orange. All right, next was something that I didn't really uh, advertise, but I tried something new, a new way of cooking dinners. And if you guys have ever followed me, I've always been a freezer bag. I use quartz uh, freezer bags to cook in. You can, uh, you're able to boil water, pour them in the bag, and, um, and cook it in there, let it sit for five or 10 minutes, and then eat out of the bag. And what's great about that is you don't have, any, you don't have to eat out of your pot and do dishes. Uh, you zip it up and the mess is in there. Um, the only thing is that you go through a lot of bags, and I know on the PCT I went through some of these small little towns that didn't have quartz freezer bags. I never even thought of it, but you get these little, little like even like uh, gas station shopping marts where you're resupplying, and they maybe have sandwich bags, but you can't put boiling water in there. So how I did this, so when I would, do this before I carried uh, this is a Reflectex bag that I made it's just a little bigger than the size of a quartz freezer bag this is what I've been doing for three or four years and so I have to carry this it's light but it's a little bit bulky and then I, I put the food the water in the, the Ziploc bag put it in here this acts as like an oven and you let it sit five or ten minutes and cook and this is a great way and maybe someday I'll go back to it but I tried something new and it really really worked well so um, I did not bring this on this trip and what I did was you know, when we prepare our resupplies, I put all my dinners in a freezer, like I did before, a freezer uh, quartz Ziploc bag. Uh, like, let's say it's a ramen, that's in the bag. So I get rid of all the packaging, all that stuff, so I don't have to bring it on trail. 
So what, what I did was instead though, and I heard these were the best ones, is I got one of these um, backpacker pantry uh, meals. I had to buy one. And um, actually somebody on trail gave this to me as like trail magic one of the first nights. So um, these have a Ziploc and you know, it has a square kind of bottom. So these can stand up like that. And so what I did was, instead of using the bag, I'd pour the ramen from the bag in here so I could reuse the bag for the next set of meals. Pour it in here, I pour my boiling water in here, I'd zip this up and let it sip. And this is, um, it's like a metallic material, it's also reusable. So what, what was great about this, I could eat out of this with my longer spoon, and then um, then I was done, I'd put some water in here and just really shake it up and rinse it out a few times and get it pretty much clean. And then literally fold it up and it weighs nothing, it's thinner than anything and it really worked well and the great thing was this said we had we were out we had four days of food i had four meals and four ziplocs well i'd poured those into here so i had the even though there was some kind of like food dust in there i could reuse those bags for like future dinner so i just kept reusing them and then once in a while if uh, they got kind of gross i would get new bags but that that worked out really well for me and i'm really happy so i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this when i get back on the pct so yeah just try it sometime if you want uh and you can just reuse it i guess until it tears or fails all right, my last thing is my ULA circuit pack. I have had this thing, you know, I did a, a, a over 2,000 mile review on this. I've had it, I look back when I first received this, it's been over two and a half years, and um, I've got well over 25, probably about 2,500 miles on this thing. And, you know, I'm looking to, my gear's gotten lighter and smaller. It's something I've been preaching as I get more experience and learn what I do and don't need. Um, so I may go to the uh, ULA Ohm. I almost bought one just recently uh, to get back on trail with. But honestly, this pack is in great shape. I just went to, uh, I actually washed this with very light soap at a um, laundromat. And I've probably washed it four times. And I sewed the whole thing in there. And uh, I just, there's no, it's a little bit faded from last year's PCT. I was in the desert for, you know, 700 miles. But there's literally not a single tear in it. There's not anything compromised. And what I like about their products is, it, right, it handles weight better. A lot of the ultralight backpacks um, cut weights and the straps and all the comfort part of it, so they can only handle so much weight comfortably before it gets uncomfortable. So uh, I really like how this handles. So you know what, I'm I'm eventually gonna get a new pack and it may be this one, but the Ohm is smaller. This is 68 liter max, the Ohm is 63 liter. So I may go to that and of course get orange, but uh, for now, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. So it's like, why spend another $300 just to have uh, to save a few ounces on a pack right now. I own it. I'm used to it. It handles weight well So this is what I'm gonna be bringing out, but I was really happy with the way this this handled and um, We went through a lot of just rough trail and brushes and sticks and this thing just took the beating and nothing tore It's in great shape. So I can't say enough about this pack for me personally I know there's lighter ones out there, but then they don't handle the weight uh, as well All right, you guys. Thank you for sitting through all that uh, I thought you'd want to know, and I've been asked a bunch of times, well, what worked, what didn't work, what would you change, things like that. So that there's your answers. Uh, a couple things real quick. Uh, I, I needed about a week or so to just rest my body, my feet, everything hurt. I feel good now. So I'm going to be doing some day hikings. I want to stay in shape and also get ready for uh, another video that I will be doing that's going to be an announcement of what I'm doing on trail. And as I've mentioned, my plan is to get back on the PCT. So I think I have a great plan worked out. I'm still working on the resupply and how it's gonna work, but uh, I'll make that video pretty soon when I have it all locked down and, and know exactly what I'm doing. So I'll let you know, so you can follow me on that if you'd like, if you enjoy my videos. Um, I'll also be doing some day hikes, like I said, and I like I love to make videos, so I'll be making uh, videos there where I don't talk as much. I'll just show the trail and maybe have some music and just show the beauty of some of the trails in Southern California. And um, what else? Uh, just. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I would love for you to follow along. You can watch the long trail that I just did in Vermont. Uh, I filmed, what was it, 70-something uh, days on the PCT last year. I did a daily vlog every single day, so check that out. I think it turned out good. Check out the links below. I have, uh, I, by the way, since I've been gone, I've gotten three or four new uh, patrons on my Patreon account. It's a way that you can go and, and donate even as much as a dollar a month up to whatever you want, you know, a couple grand a month. <laughs> But it's, it's, um, it's a way to donate for people to help support people that are creative types, whether you're a musician or a, a hiker and a vlogger or you know an artist, things like that. And I can't thank you guys enough who have jumped on board. There's been people with me almost from day one and I have some new ones since I got on the long trail. I can't thank you enough. I haven't been able to thank you while I was on trail. I just hardly had any reception 
and it was uh, pretty much slam making videos. But I wanted to thank you now. So check that out. The links below. Check it out. And there's different levels you can uh, if you want to uh, to donate something monthly to the cost and keep this channel going. Anyway, thanks for listening and watching. I hope that was informative in some way. And uh, until next time, we'll see you down the trail.